Okay, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Raspberry Pi 400, which I've been playing around with for a couple of days now. Now I'm going to go out on the limb here and say if you're subscribed to this channel, the chances are you probably already know what the Raspberry Pi 400 is. But for those of you who don't, this, this little thing here is the Raspberry Pi 400. So it's a keyboard, but it's also got a single board computer built directly inside of it powered by an ARM based processor. Now I'm just going to start by saying overall I love the idea and concept of a device coming in a form factor like this. The idea of having a functional computer inside of a keyboard where you just plug in a mouse and a display is very cool despite it actually being quite an old idea. Now I did have one slight concern when I was making my purchase and that was actually the keyboard itself and I almost didn't go through with the purchase. So I'm very particular when it comes to keyboards and as it's such an integral part to this device in the overall form factor, it needs to be a good keyboard and provide me with a good typing experience. Fortunately, I can breathe a sigh of relief. So I wrote the entire notes for this video on the device itself. And while it's by no means the best keyboard typing experience ever, it's perfectly fine and usable and I'd have no issues using it for longer periods of time. Now at the time of recording, they currently have it in six different layouts, which are UK, US, French, German, Spanish, and Italian, with more layouts coming very soon. Now moving towards the back of the device, we can take a look at the IO. Here you'll find you get a single Giganet Ethernet port, a single USB 2.0 port, twin USB 3.0 ports, a USB-C power port, twin micro HDMI ports, a micro SD port, and finally the 40 pin GPIO header. Now, if you're anything like me, you might have noticed one quite important port missing from the lineup of ports available on the Raspberry Pi 400, which is of course the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. So I guess it's gonna be okay if you only plan to be plugging it into a TV with built-in speakers, as audio will be carried over the HDMI. However, not all monitors do have speakers built into them. So I'm quite fortunate in that mine do, but the audio is a little bit grim and less than desirable. So to remedy this, I've connected a USB to headphone jack, which for the most part works okay, and it's pretty much plug and play, so no issues there. And I can now use external speakers or headphones. Now there is of course a downside to doing it this way. You're gonna be sacrificing one of your USB ports, which is less than ideal when you consider you've only got three of them. So the overall build quality of the Raspberry Pi device itself is actually amazing, especially when you consider how low this has been priced. The device feels nice and strong and sturdy in my hands and feels as though it's been built to last. So I really cannot complain here. Visually, I even like the colors of the white on the top with the red underside and has a nice little finishing touch. We even have the Raspberry Pi logo where the Windows or Super Key would be. Internally, the specs of the Pi 400 are a quad-core 64-bit Cortex-A72 ARM processor, 4GB of RAM, Bluetooth 5.0 and dual-band wireless. And again, for the price, we have to keep remembering how reasonably priced this is, and we'll go into that in just a moment. This is incredibly generous, but don't expect this little device here to win any awards as far as performance, but we'll get into that in just a moment. So the kit I purchased cost me a very reasonable £94 and in the box it included a USB-C power plug, a micro HDMI cable, a 16 gig SD card with Raspberry Pi OS preloaded onto it, a mouse and the Raspberry Pi beginner's book. It all came in very nice packaging and each accessory had its own little individual box which I can definitely appreciate. Now the quality of the bundled Raspberry Pi mouse really isn't exceptional and out of everything included in the kit is the only thing that feels like it's been made a little bit cheaply. Fortunately, unlike the keyboard, it's not an integral part of the overall form factor so you can replace it with a better mouse if you prefer. Now sticking with the Raspberry Pi mouse, the cable that it comes with is incredibly short which makes sense as you're going to be plugging it directly into the back of the Pi device itself and you wouldn't want a tangly mess of wires sprawled all over your desk. However, if you was ever in a bind where your desktop PC mouse for whatever reason stopped working and you thought, I'll use the Pi mouse for a few days until I get a new one, here you're gonna run into some issues due to that small cable. 
Now, when you're actually using the Pi 400 and playing around with it, it's pretty much completely silent in operation. The bundled SD card that includes the Raspberry Pi OS is only 16 gig in size, but even so, Raspberry Pi OS includes pretty much all of the applications you should need to get you up and running. For example, you'll find LibreOffice, Chromium, some programming tools and a whole lot more installed out of the box. It's based on Debian and uses a modified LXDE desktop. And for the most part, the performance was adequate, but I did find it really did struggle with YouTube playback. And I also noticed it suffered from screen tearing out of the box, which is a little bit annoying. For other general use like web surfing, checking emails and writing the odd document works absolutely fine and you should have no issues with that on your Pi device using Raspberry Pi OS. But what's great about the Pi is that you can of course grab another SD card and load it with whatever distribution you like until you find the perfect fit that works for you. So I tried quite a few different images ranging from the Ubuntu to the Manjaro's and pretty much everything in between and in the end I settled on Manjaro. And the Manjaro I actually settled on was using the i3 window manager. Here it is running with the dual displays using the included micro HDMI cable plus an extra one I had lying around. So there's just something special about all of this running from a single board computer contained inside a very small and nice compact keyboard. I felt Manjaro i3 performed the best out of all of the images that I've tried so far, but I even went ahead and tested it out with Manjaro's KDE image built for Pi, and let's just say performance on that one was less than spectacular, and I did run into quite a few game breaking crashes with Plasma itself. But I'll be keeping experimenting with different images as I have an abundance of just random SD cards that are just begging to be used. I'm also just a big fan of just having a load of different SD cards to hand with different distributions and OS's loading onto them that I can just swap about whenever I fancy a change. And another cool thing about this style of computing, you could always have different SDs to perform different tasks. So say you wanted one SD card that was purely for general use, browsing the web, creating documents and all of that good stuff, you could find the perfect distribution for that, install that onto one card, and then say you wanted another one just for playing old games and emulators, you could go ahead and install something like RetroPie on another, and then switch them out and be good to go. This is one of the many benefits of the Raspberry Pi, made even easier by the Raspberry Pi Imager software, which fortunately for me is installable from the AUR. But if you're running another operating system like Mac, Windows or Ubuntu, it's of course available for all of those platforms too. Now SD cards aren't the fastest things ever and they can of course feel a little bit slow in operation, especially when you've got quite a lot of things happening all at once. So alternatively, you could always set it to boot from a USB. So if you've got something like an external SSD just lying around, you could give it a go and install your favorite operating system of choice on there. But for me, that ruins the overall feel of a device of this kind and takes away a little bit of the magic from the small form factor that you get with the Raspberry Pi 400. And again, it's going to take away one of your very limited USB ports. So there are several use cases and ways a device like the Pi 400 could be used. For example, if you had an old TV and you wanted to turn it into a smart TV, you could do it with the Raspberry Pi and the help of software such as Plasma Big Screen. Or you could just use it to practice coding or playing retro games and emulators. I actually happen to think it would make a very good first time computer for a young child who's just getting into using computers and it would also help them learn along the way. Just make sure they're not too reliant on YouTube. So I'm gonna be using mine as a spare device just to tinker around with things made for the ARM architecture like software and distributions. So this is by no means the last time you'll see this device on this channel. So overall, I think the Raspberry Pi 400 is an incredibly fun little device at an extremely reasonable price point. I've had a lot of fun with it, whether it's been at my TV stand or sitting on my desk as a secondary computer. If you're considering buying one, but for whatever reason are holding off, perhaps like me, you're a bit worried you won't like the keyboard, I'll say just go for it. I don't think you're gonna regret your decision and it will provide you with plenty of hours of fun tinkering around with it. So that wraps up our first look of the Raspberry Pi 400. I've been having a lot of fun with this device and it's definitely not the last time it will be on the channel. So look out for future videos featuring it very soon. If there's any software or distributions you'd like me to check out made for the Raspberry Pi, let me know in the comments to this video. A massive thank you for watching and if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe. And if you really enjoyed it, you could also consider supporting me on Patreon. And as ever, join the Discord. There's links to everything in the description below. 
I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.